since we have this thing set up right now, uh, why don't we go ahead and do the graph for the absolute value of a quadratic function, okay? Uh, because I do want to show you what that looks like. And um, the space we have here is, uh, uh, is pretty tight. Uh, so hopefully we can fit it all in. But to be able to do that first, um, what we have to do is uh, to graph a quadratic function, right? And graphing quadratic functions um, requires a certain amount of finesse, requires a certain technique uh, that we do uh, to be able to graph them, right? And that process is called completing the square. So what I'm gonna do right now is we're gonna graph just a simple quadratic function. Okay, and then what we're gonna do, we're gonna take this quadratic function and put absolute values on it, and we're gonna graph it as if it was a absolute value quadratic function. Okay, so let's take um, a quadratic function and graph it. And let's do this thing in green because uh, this is a sharper, uh, sharper tip, so hopefully I can get more information on the page okay so if uh, if if you're curious if you're if you really want to learn this technique really well i do plan on in the future uh putting a whole set of videos together on graphing functions like this starting with a linear function and then going into a quadratic function and then cubic function and so on and so forth right um, the polynomials and then kicking that off into graphing non-polynomial function so you know, if, uh, if you get lost in this process, um, at some point I will be creating, you know, fairly uh, in-depth playlist on how to do this. But right now for anyone that's, you know, you have studied this, uh, this should be a fairly good reminder of how to do this. Um, and it's a beautiful little technique, a uh, little process, right? And basically the way you should think about it is when you're graphing linear functions, you have to put them in the form of y equals mx plus b, right? So if you're graphing linear functions, linear functions have to be in the form of y equals mx plus b okay and b is your y-intercept and m is your uh, slope right but to be able to graph a quadratic function a parabola what you have to do is put it in the following form y is equal to a bracket x minus p squared plus q okay now, this may seem complicated, may seem foreign if you're not familiar with it, but all it is is this A sort of gives us a vertical stretch or a compression and it flips the, flips the graph, the parabola. The P and the Q are your vertex. Uh, X minus P equals zero, that's your axis of symmetry, and so on and so forth. You're basically reading off, putting it into a form that you can read it and then you just read it off and graph it, okay? So what we're gonna do right now is take a quadratic, a trinomial, and force it to be in this form, okay? So let's take a basic quadratic function. Let's take y is equal to negative two x squared plus, uh, let's make this six x, Mm, plus two, okay? Let's say we wanted to graph this thing, right? What we need to do to this is to get it into this form, right? To be able to just read off the points and throw in a graph. So this is the process that you do. And I'm gonna do this uh, sort of uh, Speedy Gonzalez style, right? Uh, but in a future video, I promise, I will lay this out very nicely uh, with all the different steps in there, okay? Um, but for those of you who have done this, hopefully this will be a good little review for you uh, because this, this is a very important process, right? So all the extra steps, I'm gonna, you know, mark it off with the red pen. So the first order of business, when you're graphing quadratics, when you're converting them from this form into this form, 
is you put brackets around the x squared and the x term. Okay, so you put brackets around this. The next step you need to do is you need to make sure that the x squared term is solo, meaning that there can't be a number in front of it, right? So what we need to do is take this coefficient out of the bracket, okay? So we're gonna grab the negative two and put it in front of the bracket. Now, when we do this, what we need to do, we need to compensate for this term right here, right? For the six, because we're, this is inside the bracket, right? This x squared and the x term. So when we take the negative two and we put it outside the bracket, whatever is inside the bracket affects whatever is but whatever is outside the bracket affects whatever is inside the bracket. So we have to compensate for this thing. So what we got right now is the following. Y is equal to negative 2 bracket x squared, right? Because we just grabbed the negative 2, put it in front of the bracket, right? Now what we need to do to compensate for this, for the 6 value, it's just divide 6 by negative 2. So if we divide this guy by negative 2, what we end up having here is negative 3x plus 2. Okay. That's sort of the first step in us converting this into this form. Now what we do is we grab the coefficient in front of the x term and we divide it by 2. Now, it just happens to be a coincidence that this is negative 2, and we took that out and divided it by negative 2, and the process here, us taking negative 3 and dividing it by 2. If this was a 4 coming out, or a 3 coming out, or any other number coming out in front of the bracket, we would still take the coefficient in front of the x and divide it by 2. That's just what we do. Okay, so we're going to take this guy, the negative 3, and we're going to bring it out, and we're going to divide this by 2. You always do that in this step, okay? You're always dividing it by 2. And keep in mind, uh, you know, the saying that we've been using is the sign in front of the number always goes with the number, right? So that's not a 3, that's a negative 3. Okay, so we take negative 3 divided by 2. Keep it in fraction form. Learn how to deal with fractions, right? And then what we do is we take this term and square it. Okay, so we're going to take this guy and square it. Now what I do is I always tell my students, circle this guy, circle this term, and circle the squared term because we're going to end up using these two terms. So what we do is we take this, that's a two, and we square it. Negative three over two squared is gonna be nine over four. So this becomes nine over four. And once we get this, we're gonna circle this as well. Okay. The next step in this process called completing the square, right? We're gonna add and subtract nine over four inside the brackets and we're going to add it first and we're going to subtract it okay so we're going to go x squared minus 3x plus 9 over 4 minus 9 over 4 okay so we're going to write this out we're going to go y is equal to negative 2 x squared minus 3x and we're going to take this guy we're going to add it and we're going to subtract it plus 9 over 4 minus 9 over 4 close your bracket plus 2 okay i hope that's uh, uh do we see the two i hope we see the two that's a two over there right just the two from here going there now why do we do this because we're trying to make the inside become a perfect square and the reason we're adding and subtracting it is because 
we can't just arbitrarily add a number to an equation right the only thing we can add to an equation to a function without changing it is zero so positive 9 over 4 minus 9 over 4 they kill each other it's like they're not there right that just becomes zero so we really haven't changed this function at all we're just trying to make it look different okay the next step is we're going to take the negative one out of the bracket now when we take it out of the bracket we have to multiply it by whatever is outside the bracket right whatever is guarding it right so if this guy's coming out of the bracket whatever is in front of the bracket multiplies that okay and you can do that on the side or you can do it here you can do it wherever you want let's let's do the calculation over here right nine nine over four negative nine over four times negative two negative nine over four times negative two right well negative and a negative is positive the two reduces this down to two right so this thing becomes nine over two that's what's going to be coming oops where are we that's what's going to be coming here right the other thing we're going to note is that this guy is now a perfect square what that means is we're trying to factor it we're looking for two numbers that multiply together to give us nine over four and add together to give us negative three right and we don't have to think about what that is it's this number here is negative three over two that's the reason we circled it right so if we factor this guy and we've talked about factoring simple trinomials or factoring trinomials right the different factoring techniques we have in series 3b 3a and 3b right so two numbers that multiply to give you 9 over 4 and add to give you negative 3 or negative 3 over 2 times negative 3 over 2 gives us 9 over 4 and negative 3 over 2 plus negative 3 over 2 gives us negative 3 okay so if we factor this this is what we end up getting we end up getting this guy becomes x minus 3 over 2 times x minus 3 over 2 right well we can write just write that as x minus 3 over 2 squared so right now our equation is going to look like this y is equal to negative 2 x minus 3 over 2 squared plus 2 plus 9 over 2 what we brought out right plus 9 over 2 okay so all we have to do now is add these guys and these guys just adding fractions that's over one common denominator is 2 and this becomes 4 right so this becomes 13 over 2 so our equation now is y is equal to negative 2 x minus 3 over 2 squared plus 13 over 2 this guy is now right here is now in this form and we all you know all we have to do is just read off everything that's going on here the vertex of this thing is going to be 3 over 2 is the opposite sign of this and 13 over 2 so 1 1.5 the x coordinate is 1.5 and the y is 13 over 2 which is uh, six and a half right 6.5 so our vertex is at one and a half and six and a half right and if we're going to graph this let's do this very simply okay so one and a half let's assume that's one and a half here six and a half let's just go up let's assume it's here so this point here is going to be three over two and 13 over two okay this thing opens down because it's negative two it's got a vertical expansion of a factor of two the axis of symmetry is x equals 
1 over 2. So our axis of symmetry is right here. Right? Um, we can read off what our y-intercept is by plugging in x is equal to 0. But we're not going to do it on this one. Whenever you're trying to find the y-intercept, go back to the original. Set x is equal to 0 here. That becomes 0. That becomes 0. So our y-intercept is 2. Right? So y-intercept is going to be here. Let's assume that's 2. So that's 0 and 2. So the graph on this side comes down like this. And the axis of symmetry for a parabola is basically this thing is very small. This thing is going to be symmetrical, right? What I usually tell my students is axis of symmetry means if you know if you cut me down the middle, hopefully my ears are the same distance apart, right? So what we have here is the axis of symmetry for this is one and a half, right? So if we go one and a half over, we're at three. So this point, its mirror point, is going to be at 3 and 2. So now we can graph this part of it. Okay. So the graph of this function looks like that. And our x-intercepts are, you know, we set y is equal to 0. We find, uh, we find the x-intercepts of stuff that we did before in series 3a and 3b. Okay. Um, I will go through this in depth in future videos okay I just wanted to show how we end up graphing a quadratic function and I'm gonna do a simpler one right now but what we're gonna do we're gonna graph the absolute value of a quadratic function because I love the way that thing looks and um, what we have to do to be able to graph it. and it sort of mimics what we have to do when we're graphing the absolute value of linear functions but it just you know it's just a one more step up it's just a little bit more complicated because now we're dealing with quadratics we're not linear functions okay uh, so let's take this down and do the same thing um, with an absolute value of a quadratic function which is a little bit more simpler than this or the function we're going to pick is going to be a little bit simpler 